If you want to be unhealthy mentally, spiritually, and especially physically, follow the world. The world moves in an unhealthy direction. Everything the world tells you to be sedentary, distracted, to be alarmed, tells you not to meditate or pray or learn. Just consume, consume, consume. Don't listen to the world. One of the best things you could do if you want to be healthy. One of my favorite quotes. Uh, Shut up, Mother Earth. The, <laughs> what? The, 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 That's the, not what I meant. The, <laughs> majo- the majority is not always right. Sometimes the, the majority just means all the fools are on the same side. Yeah. yeah I like, I Love like that, that quote. Yeah. No, I mean, if you think about it, right, um, the, the the world serves, uh, you know, the human desire mostly. And we desire to distract ourselves. We desire to be sedentary, to not have any challenge. We desire to stay in the same place as comfortably as we possibly can. And so following this, uh, you know, this way you, you find terrible health, not just physical health, but mental health. And there's even spiritual health crisis where people are losing a sense of meaning. You see depression, anxiety continue to rise, even though we have more stuff, more food, more shelter than ever before. And then health, obviously physical health. I don't have to make that argument. And it's literally, if, and I mean, this is hundred percent. If you want to be healthy and all those things, you got to be different than almost everybody you know. You have to literally not buy the things, consume the things, watch the things, do the yeah. things that everybody else does. Or that's exactly you advocate what you're for yourself. It's crazy. You gotta, yeah, you really have to look. It's it's so nuts to see like how you know growing up you you listen to a lot of these institutions and a lot of these recommendations and standards, and then you you know you get older and more mature, and you you look into it further, and you're like, wait, this wasn't helping me at all. In fact, it's the opposite of what I should be doing. Totally. Isn't it's that something that, that we probably all shared in common? That, I mean, obviously, well before any of us knew each other, um, I, I know I was like this. I'm pretty sure both of you were like this, too, um, when you grew up. Like, I was totally not the kid who was trying to fit in with a certain mm-hmm. group oh, or do what everybody else did. Like, I liked I liked the fact that I was different, mm-hmm. you know. Now, what I try and I, it's so it's hard to remember like where that came out of. Like sometimes I think it, it probably came out of necessity and survival because I bounced around so much. I didn't have so you the, just embraced that you were yeah, always the outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think there was probably a, a moment or a, a moment in time where uh, I, I might have been challenged with it, um, but quickly realized that that wasn't going to change. I wasn't overnight going to become the rich kid who had all mm-hmm. the in, in clothes or whatever like that. Um, I, I moved around enough towns that, you know, in, in, in some cities and some towns, uh, I was, you know, the ethnic kid and then other ones, I was the white kid. And so it was like, I didn't fit in a specific demographic or group. And mm. so, I, so I think quickly I realized like, Jesus, I don't, I don't even want to try and fit into these cause I don't naturally go into anything. And so I embraced this being unique and different and definitely served me into adulthood. You could have gone the opposite direction. Right. Like trying so hard hard. to be accepted. Right. I, I I didn't move at all. I, you and I couldn't have lived more in in many ways, not always, but many ways, more different lives. I lived in the same house mostly uh, for most of my life. My parents still live there. So very consistent. Um, But I definitely, I felt different. Uh, I wasn't stimulated by the same conversations. Mm-hmm. Um, I saw what kids were into. And some of it I was, some of it I wasn't. And I just kind of felt, I don't know, like I wanted to learn other things. And I really didn't care too much what other uh, kids were into. I would be into something and I'd go yeah. for it. And I wasn't embarrassed about it. Um, it. To a fault. Sometimes I th- I think I go against the grain because yeah. I hate so much to go with the grain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was such a nonconformist, yeah. man. I don't know why. Just It's just one of those things. Like I just didn't relate at all to a lot of people I grew up with and my family even it was just like I just was into way different things Mm. and then it's like you know is there something wrong with me and like you start kind of going down that you know negative path and then you start realizing you know well I'm just different I'm different than than everybody else around me and that's fine and and then I'd start leaning into that more as I grew up later and found like a few people kind of like me but it was like it was weird. It was like, I just always felt like, man, I'm out of place here. I'm out of place here. And I didn't travel or move a lot. Uh, it was just like, it's just one of those things. Everybody kind of had the same yeah. sort of think. And I just wasn't there with that. That has to be a quality that uh, uh, like connected all of us. A hundred percent. Because we're that. different. We didn't know. That. Yeah, we're very different. Yeah. We came, we all had very different backgrounds. 
but we all are. I mean, to a fault, I'm a non-conformist too. Like, oh, I know. You know there's I been mean, times where like, I really want to do something <laughs> because everybody else is doing it now. I'm like, fuck, I can't do it. I kind of <laughs> hate that I'm a <laughs> rebel. Like, Why do I have to yeah. be that way? You know what I'm saying? It's like, I really want to go. <laughs> I told Katrina this just the other night. We're talking about, I'm like, I can wear a oh. uniform, I swear. I told her, I was telling her, I was like, you know, I really, I really want to get into jujitsu. She's like, well, then why don't you do it? Everybody like, does it. Because I'm like, everybody's <laughs> doing it. That's why. Exactly. <laughs> She's like, you're so funny. I'm like, well, that's a problem for me. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody's doing it. I don't want to do it. I could totally relate. No, I, I, you know, I was like that. For me, the first time I ever felt like I like, oh, this is where I'm supposed to be, was when I started working in the gym. But it wasn't the gym where I felt like I belonged. I love the gym. I always like working out, work out my own. I don't. It doesn't matter where I work out. My garage, my backyard at a gym. I enjoy it because it's my thing. But it wasn't the gym that I felt like I belonged. It was the the atmosphere. And very quickly, I was put in a, a leadership position, and I just enjoyed doing that. I enjoyed uh, working with people, feeling motivated, uh, learning, teaching, growing. I met a lot of growth-minded uh, mentors during that period of time. It was a great period for anybody who ever worked for 24-Hour Fitness in the late 90s, early 2000s. You guys did. It was a great, like, super growth-minded time. I, it wasn't always good stuff that I learned, but everybody <laughs> was always trying to, like, be better. Mm -hmm. So that was the first time I really felt like, oh, I, this is a place I belong. Well, you know? one of the things that is the one of the few positive things I have found in the Bay Area is it's such a melting pot. Oh, and yeah. you have so many different types, like so many cultures and races and religions and mm -hmm. People are things that people are into. A lot of really smart, dynamic, people. and interesting. Yes. Yeah. Did yeah. you guys learn? You know how much I learn from my clients. It's. I feel like I got several degrees just from yeah. learning from the clients. That oh I'm yeah. Trained. I mean, how how families operate, how people work towards business and their goals, how different cultures value different things. Like, I really appreciate. That was one of my favorite parts of being a trainer. Was I felt like I got fast track. I almost felt like I got to be a world traveler without ever leaving my city. Mm. In a sense, yes. right? Because we got to train so many different people from f so many different parts of the world with so many different backgrounds. Yeah, I felt like it gave me a ch even though I didn't travel and go there. And I know mm -hmm. some people that are big into traveling would be like, oh, it's not the same as like getting your feet on the ground and being there. Like, I get it. But at least I felt like I got a piece of that. Yeah, but you developed close relationships with different people, which has got its own value. Sure. Because these are people you train. I mean, one of the things that's valuable about this, and, and, and you know what's interesting now that we're talking about this, this probably feeds into that attitude that all of us have about not immediately going along with the crowd and obviously being, you know, skeptical is. You train so many different people and in order to be successful, by the way, you, you create an intimate relationship with your clients or a close relationship because you see them week in and week out for years. If you do a good job, you see somebody for two hours a week, undivided attention for five, six, seven. I had clients that I had for 12 years. Like you get really close to these people and some of them are old. Mm -hmm. Some of them are young. Some of them work in a desk job. There's some people that are blue collar, different cultures. And in order to be effective, you you have to really accept all these different things and 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 work with them and move with them and communicate with them, and learn from them. And I think that that give you that that perspective gives you so much. You get such a broad view of things that I think it's almost like almost like a lie detector with the world. Be like, well, actually, I know people who don't do that. Yeah, yeah. They go this way or they believe this thing, and it works out for them. Yeah, you learn a lot uh, with all these different characters that, that you've come across, especially with the clients I've trained and um, just the way that people think differently, the way that they communicate differently with, you know, body language, like all these types of things. Cause you're always observing as a trainer too. Like you're trying to look at like uh, what's their energy coming in? Like, can I see yes. whether or not they're in a certain mood is, you know, are they affected by work or like some kind of relationship? Like you can read a lot from people before they even speak uh, and utter a word. Mm -hmm. And so that was just something that I started to kind of, you know, really observe and, and lean into a bit more. And it was cool because you could get so much variety, especially like when we were at 24 Hour Fitness, it was like just a nonstop sort of factory conveyor belt of clients that you're just like, oh my God, I got to like break this down and analyze it yeah. and do my detect, put my detective hat on and figure out how to help this person. It's such a beautiful and fruitful, uh, you know, career choice. Uh, and I know we, a lot of times <laughs> discourage people <laughs> from going that direction because of how hard it can be as far as making a lot of money, right? It's not, or just, uh, just, you know, creating a career, supporting your family. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a hard job. The hours, uh, are unique because you tend to have to work around, uh, client schedules, which is early in the morning, later in the evening or after, after work hours for most people. Yeah. So most so that, successful trainers are working 
two shifts twice a day, yeah. four and four. Yeah. yeah, and probably six days a week because yeah. you have three cl- three on three out, right? You have the yep. th- three day split type of deal. So it's normally a six day a week. It's normally eight, 10 hours with these four or five hour blocks that are divided in the middle of the day. So it's a really can be demand to be very successful at it, right? And and even then you're not gonna get rich probably wearing those, but the it is incredibly rewarding for all the things that we're talking about. And yeah. we don't highlight that a lot, right? We, we talk a lot about the challenges and difficulties, but I tell you what, yeah. I, I wouldn't do anything different. I'd mm. go back and do it the same way totally. again, like even going through that. I might have made pivots sooner. Like I definitely think that um, I got caught in that paradox I talked about before where you're, when you're comfortable, mm-hmm. yeah. you know? So for about four years, I was comfortable in a position where – I should have, like, I, I wish I had a mentor, an older, wiser person telling me, like, and and for those that are listening, like, this to me is a, it was when it's time to move on from whatever career you're doing. It's when you stop growing and learning within the ecosystem that you're in. Mm-hmm. When you can honestly go, I'm not really growing yeah. more as an individual. And what I did is I took that on as my own responsibility to go read and start. That's what that's. St- that I know exactly me. what that mm-hmm. feeling feels like. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. you know what it starts to feel like to me? I stop wanting to show up. Yeah. Yeah. I just stopped feeling like oh, your yeah. service quality, everything kind of diminishes. Yeah. It's a, t- it's a terrible feeling, but well, know. what it was for me and, and, and I had a really later on had a harder time uh, reconciling this because the way I justified it during the, during the process was I knew I could give, you know, 75% and I'm not sharing this to, uh, to pat myself out or ego boost or anything like that, but I knew I could give 75% of my profession and it was better than everybody else that I, my mm-hmm. peers. Yeah. And, but that was, that's like, I'm, I'm, I'm robbing myself. Yep. You're like on uh, autopilot though. Yeah. It was like, oh yeah, I can, I can, I can give this, this job half ass and I'm still out competing my, my peers not growing. And I stayed in that place for almost four years, four years of my life. Yeah. I was probably stuck there. And, and again, justified that because I was still having some success. I liked being in the gym. I, I, I attached it to all these things that we're talking about. Like, oh, I still love my clients and I was getting stuff from them, but Really, uh, from a from a business perspective, I, I wasn't growing anymore, and I probably should have moved on. But that being said, I would have never done anything different as far as like working in a big box gym and being a trainer and, and cutting my teeth that way. No, I, I, I if you have a passion um, for people and you like fitness, then it's very rewarding. If you don't have a passion for people, this job sucks because you're working eight. I mean, I don't I'm, even know how you could pull it off. I, well, I, yeah. that's what I'm saying. You quit because. Even if you're blessed with 40 hours of, you know, 40 sessions a week as a trainer. Okay. So you like, you don't have to worry about getting clients, which you won't get if you don't like people, but let's just say somebody gave you 40 sessions a week. That's 40 hours in front of somebody that you're working with. You're not at a desk. You can't just walk away from your computer and get some water. You're with somebody that whole time. If you don't have a passion for people, you will be exhausted. It will not feel invigorating. Now, if you have a passion for people, then it's, it's invigorating. I mean, I'd be tired and a client would come in and we'd have, you know, conversation or I'd ask some things or see what's going on and, and learn things from them. I used to love, that's why I used to love training older people. Um, I would ask them all kinds of life advice and they would sit there and just tell me like so many interesting things about their lives. Yeah, and, yeah. Oh, yeah. so cool. I mean, I didn't know we were going to go this direction in the conversation, but this, I just recently uh, had a conversation yesterday with the RVP of 24 hour fitness. And, you know, we've been in, in, in consistent conversation about uh, our coaching program. And it's just, I was sharing with him, like, I mean, it's so cool that this year that we partnered with NASM and now here we are in conversations with 24 hour fitness. I'm like, how cool would that be to be able to kind of complete that full? Like, That'd be weird. In ASM, mm-hmm. I think of like, was like our, was probably the schooling for us when we were coming up. And I think of our parents as 24 hour fitness, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, so, <laughs> so, so, so to kind of, yeah. to, partner up with them, uh, as a company, uh, you know, almost 10 years later for us, I think is so cool. That'd be so so cool that we're already partnered with NASM. Uh, and I I just posted that, like we, obviously we've mentioned it because we started the the commercials for them a couple of weeks ago, but I just recently posted the, uh, you know, the official NASM is partnered with 24 hour fitness. I mean, with, uh, mind pump and getting all kinds of people like, oh my God, that's so crazy. And it's just like, it's, it is it is crazy when you think about how- That was the first like legit cert I had. Oh. The first one. Actually, the first cert I had was the 24 Fitness cert. They had their own cert. Did I tell you guys that? <laughs> that was my first one. Did you, did I had that too. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. I did a weekend and got yeah, yeah. that one. Yeah, yeah, and then I did NASM and that's where I, I really started So you know they went, things. so from you and I, they, it was a full week course. Yeah. By the time Justin came through, it was a weekend course. Oh, and mm-hmm. then eventually they got rid of all of it completely. And by the way, one of the things we were talking with him 
it, this is one of the challenges of having. So that was done by Apex, right? Yeah. yeah. It's funny you bring that up because when we were having this conversation, him and I, he really sees as us being the Apex for them, like Apex was back oh, in wow. the days. He goes, because they they were a great farm system for them, for, for, good, for good trainers. Yeah. That's one of the things they're challenged with right now. When they hit through COVID, they, they cut 60% of their workforce. Oh, wow. So 60% of it, and they had about 4,500 trainers working for the company. So you're talking about like 2,000 trainers yeah. left. And and they're and they're struggling to get talented, good trainers working for them. The, and so I, their hopes, I think, of potentially doing something with us is that we provide a farm system for them, much like what Apex. Listen, did for the them problem is the problem is very clear. If you are if you're passionate uh, about people, you like fitness, and you're growth minded. Okay, I could take you, and with 100 percent certainty, unless you're like super lazy, you got terrible. You got some drug habit or something weird. If you have those things and you're willing to kind of work, I, I could make you successful 100%, 100%. I know you guys feel the same way. Yeah. The problem and why that's not the case with people that become trainers who love people, passionate about people, love fitness, and are growth-minded, the problem is nobody teaches them how to do that. They don't really, nobody really coaches and learn, you know, and mentors them on how to do this. This is why you see such a huge difference between when you see good clubs with good fitness managers versus cl comparable clubs with not great fitness managers, the difference in the training staff and the training staff revenue and how many clients get trainers is dramatic. Oh yeah, it's true. like massive the difference. It's because they just don't get the training. Yeah, you yeah. know, it's it's all about the training. Yeah, there was an old saying in, at the club that there was no such thing as bad clubs, only bad leaders. You know, because and then the, and they've proved that many times where they took a club where. I mean, I remember when there was times when they were going to shut a club down because it was underperforming. They put the right manager yeah, in there. Yeah, and put mm -hmm. the right, the, they put the right leader in there, and then all of a sudden it breaks records. And so that's a perfect example <laughs> yeah, of like a how a club – literally, this was – I remember when they did this with Larry Evans. I remember when I took over the Capitol McKee location. I followed somebody else at Hillsdale, same thing. And it was like they were underperforming. The, the, a, a different person comes in, and then it, it not only rebounds, but then it sets records from that. I mean, that's a huge example of like it wasn't the club that nope. was underperforming. It's the culture no. – that was developed in it, and it is a, a top-down thing. The and gyms have a culture for sure. You can you can feel it when you walk in. There's a for sure culture, and that has a big impact on the club's success, both with how many people they sign up and then how many members show up and want to work out and want to be there. It's about the culture. I think a lot of people think it's about the equipment, uh, but it really isn't. I've worked in some clubs, man. One of the, I managed I managed uh, you know Sunnyvale before they remodeled, whatever. Yeah. Man, that club was old. I mean, we had weights that didn't match, and when it rained, the ceiling would collapse, and the pool would be broken after Green time. pool. Yeah, dude. But, you <laughs> know. Smelly. Yeah, but it, I mean, you know, suit. it was one of the original clubs. It had racquetball, yeah, yeah, you know, like yeah, Capital was yeah, one. Yeah, and Hills yeah, yeah. And, uh, but we, you know. What we, number was? We, it's 506. 506. Yeah, yeah, Hillsdale Q's was 504. Capital's 505. 505. Yeah. So, so Hillsdale, Capital. Yep, those were the first ones that they uh, put together. By the way, with the NASM, they're offering our uh, listeners a discount on their certs. So the all-inclusive, uh, I believe the all-inclusive is the, I want to say $12.49 or the, the, the premium self-study, sorry, is $12.49. They'll get it for $8.99 and they're offering discounts with their CPTs. So across the board. So whether you get the self-study, the premium or the inclusive. They, they also discounts. offer on all their stuff, which they didn't do this in the past, which this is the coolest part about what, or at least what I think is one of the coolest things is uh, they offer monthly payment plans on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They didn't do that back they in the day. They didn't do that back in the day. Yeah, you had, to, you had to come up with the the costs up front. And when you're trying to build your business, mm -hmm. spending thousands of dollars on certifications sometimes, as, as much as you want them, you're like, yeah. oh, God, I'm not even making that much yeah. money. Do so, you have to still pay for the retest? I know that was another thing. If you fail? Yeah, if you fail. Mm. Uh, I'm sure you do. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure if you if you fail, you still got it. I don't know what it was. We can what, find out. We what, can find yeah, out, what it is. But yeah. no, I, I think that's uh, yeah. It, it's incredible what they're what they're doing over there. The, the things that they're offering for free now, in addition, and the things that they're complementing all the certification courses with is they're trying to take over the. Incredible. Well, I'm curious to see if there's like any kind because I know there's been an influx of people interested after COVID and everything else of getting into the health space, of like actually being interested in in becoming a trainer through a corporate gym versus now um, going into like a smaller box or like, you know, online. It'd be interesting to see like the motivation of somebody coming in. We obviously recommend, you know, going through the corporate gym route because it's the proven grounds. It's it makes the it not face that. to face. It's the hands-on. Yeah, and they'll, and they'll give you do tons of marketing. You have tons of opportunities at gym. Yeah. Way more leads. 
makes no sense to start as a personal trainer no. in a small studio. Yeah, but you don't know that. Unless you have great mentors. Unless you have a a strong entrepreneurial background before getting into personal sure, training. Sure, sure, sure. That, because that, that, that's a bit of a you know, business acumen to understand that. Yeah, that's true. To know that you know, marketing and advertising, lead generation, you know, repetition, all those things are a major factor in the success yeah. and the scaling rate of any business. If you don't really understand that, like a lot of tr trainers that are just really dipping their toes in entrepreneurship, you don't realize that they go by like, oh, I like this gym or this it's close to my home or it has the equipment that I like, or I like the other five trainers that work yeah. here in this private studio or whatever. And they don't realize like, that is not a big part of your business at all. A big part of your business is just access to leads. And you're just not going to get that many leads like you are in a, a big box gym that's getting 2,000 plus right. workouts a you're day. You're not going to get the practice of your craft. Yeah. You know, so so, the, so uh, I still you, recommend that. When you do the self-study, the the self what is that? The self-study premium? Is that yes, what that one is? Yes, self-study premium. Then you can yeah. get an exam retest. Oh, okay. And that's that's cool. Oh, okay. wow. That's cool. That's I good. Do that before. Yeah, yeah. The one thing I don't know about that I want to know about, and I see it on the thing because Doug's got it up on the screen right now, is that the job guarantee, they have a 90-day job guarantee. You get a refund of a certain amount is what it is. It's, it's, huh. we'll, we'll see if we can find out what that amount is. Uh, it's not the total, but within 90 days, if you don't get a job, there's a job guarantee amount that they refund you hmm. is what I, I believe. So you'll get some some sort of send that to Katrina so she can get those exact details because yeah. I find that really interesting that they I mean that's a that's a big deal to that build. is a big it's deal. pretty bold yeah that's a, that's to, a very big deal which but though also highlights probably the success rate of trainers that go through an NSA. yeah totally you know yeah. don't have a hard time getting a, totally. a job today's giveaway is Maps PED this is the most advanced program probably mostly inappropriate for all of you because it's a lot of training but you can win it. But you have to do this in the first 24-hour period that we post this up. You need to leave a comment below this video. Also, subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. Also, this month's program sale, Maps Anywhere and Maps Hit, 50% off. Go sign up. Click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. All right, yeah, you know what else? Lawyers love it. You know what else is a big deal? What? You look, uh, how much weight you lose, dude? <laughs> what are you down? Adam walked in, Adam <laughs> right. walked in today. Tread like, lightly, dude. You look, you look like a fashion, uh, like, a, like a. Easy, dude. My, <laughs> my, 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 my wife said to me last night that I was, I was look, she said lean, but she didn't say it in a complimented way. Yeah. Oh, was, no. Yeah, yeah. mid sex, dude. It was totally ruined the moment. No. Yeah, yeah, dude. yeah, yeah. Was this all for the Viore shoot that we yeah. have to do? Yeah. 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 No. What do you hold on, hold on. It's yeah. sporty. It's Wait, sporty, Adam. Yeah. Hold on, mid sex. She's like, mid sex, bro. My wife, I don't know what you she's look, doing. She's like, you look smart. <laughs> yeah. I almost shut it down right there. Like, Why would you say that to me right now? <laughs> yeah. like, we're right in the throes of this right now, and you're going to say this. Maybe say afterwards that, when in I'm a non tired. way. Because yeah. she even followed it up with, like, ah, I don't know if I like it or not. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Bro. Oh, and then no. I find myself, I'm like defending myself in the middle of sex. Like, hey, I'm, I'm flat right now. I haven't got any car behind yeah, me. Yeah. <laughs> you're all flexing like, extra. Like, you're not helping this situation right now at all. I'm trying to embrace this, like getting leaner and small, you know, smaller and kind of shrinking yeah. down and seeing how my body feels. Oh my God, that's um, hilarious. Aside from the, I, I, I also, uh, you know, this isn't all from the trisepatite because I also caught my son's flu bug. Yeah, that's right. And so I have for the last three yeah, days. Yeah, the poopies. Yeah, the mm -hmm. things. <laughs> the last three days <laughs> I've had. A medical been, term. I've had the, the stomach <laughs> flu a bit and, and just real mild. Like I didn't get hit like as bad as he did, but I've had it. But interesting to be right in the middle of doing this trisepatide while also getting a stomach flu is like i have like you don't want nothing nothing i have no desire for food at all oh. so yeah no i'm down 10 pounds uh right now not a lot of that's probably water yeah weight. you're probably good you're probably I'm oh yeah half I, I, of that is three water. well i'd put three i'd put three pounds right on on a, a full day of eating right yeah, away yeah. like so you know i'm probably i'm probably down though a solid seven pounds i would if i had to guesstimate um, in the last two and a half weeks mm -hmm. or so that we've been running the trisepatide. And so, um, and still really fascinating what, what's going on with it. And I feel, uh, aside from the, the flu bug, I feel really good. Like, um, um, I'm going to keep going and just allowing it to unfold. I was, you know, Doug was bringing up a point of like, oh man, that's probably not good. You're that low. I said, you know, but I don't want the thing that's going to be most challenging 
is to not let my wife get in my head, not let my my my. <laughs> I'm gonna send her a text right my now. My knowledge. <laughs> Adam's really insecure. And I can my, stop. Can my stop? knowledge around macros and yeah. what I need to have certain amount of muscle in my body. Up all your food. I really <laughs> want to go through this process like I was a client who's kind of unaware a bit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like I'm trying to be really like. Brilliant. I love it. And, and just let it go, I and then it. It, then express my feelings through it. That way. I th- you have a real good uh, opinion. Yeah, because I like definitely that. know how to go through this and manipulate it, accelerate it one way, or and mitigate. Don't know if it's doing, yeah, it or, then yeah. mitigate the fat, yeah, the, yeah. the muscle loss because I'm I'm yeah. stuffing myself with protein at night. Like I don't want to do that. Like I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna eat when I'm hungry. I'm gonna I'm gonna really try and go off of how I. The, the interesting part is the the urges for junk food at all have just not been there I mean, how's your how was your uh are you working out well you haven't because you've been not the last three days sick. but i was before that so my, my i'm work- interested to see how your performance is you're gonna have to wait though till you yeah i'm a bit better. weak right now i mean i know i'm weak like i'm i i, I lifted i, I squatted uh, the other day and it was more challenging than usual mm. uh and so but i mean that's calorie deficit for yep. two weeks yep. you know what i'm saying like i, I, I mean this might feed right into your basketball goals yeah, I like Justin it. secretly. That's my goal. Yeah. Secretly, I'm like, I'm gonna go with it and lean into it. Part of leaning into it was like, hey, if I keep getting leaner and leaner and smaller and smaller, Dude, if you're light and you're bouncy, you know, that's and I'm to less with. likely to get injured. And so then I'm just, so that's kind of the idea is like I'm gonna, which is also why I didn't want to talk too much about it because then I yeah. get everybody who's asking, where do you play? I don't play anywhere right now. No, no. When if you do, if you start. So, you have a place we <laughs> we should fun- start a league, bro. Like, well, so it's actually a really that's actually a really old guy league. Funny, interesting question. No, there's like. um We've talked about this before about, uh, do you Definitely do this? old man league. Well, yeah. no, there's a, I, I talked about this a long time ago. Remember when I was bodybuilding? You have to wear New Balance. I used to tell you guys <laughs> that there is, and maybe this and is just angry yeah. like this. There is gym memberships. Part of why I keep all of them is because where I'm at in my lifting career, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm going to certain yeah, ones. Bodybuilder gym. Yes. You know, yeah. Steam room just gym. Just getting started yeah. again. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like yeah. feeling myself yeah. in gym. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I had different gym. Just the that. Smith machine. I have, I have different times to play basketball at different locations based off of where I'm at in my basketball game too. Like if I'm like going to go pay my, play my first pickup game, I'm going during the week around 10 o'clock in the morning to 24 fitness on Cottle. Like oh, yeah. that's when all the 40 plus d- dads. <laughs> Unemployed are, yeah. dads. Yeah. But they, but, all the but sloppy. They got game. But they got game. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Okay. They got okay. game. They can play. You know what I'm saying? But it's not the, it's not the. They're not moving yet. quick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then as I, as I get better, I'll show up on, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday nights yeah. after all the kids are out of school. And now I get some of the high school, oh. college kids that are playing like game. Just level. Then. That was Saturday me. mornings at the Super Sport is like now you're getting like That's kids that are playing. Oh yeah, they're still yeah. playing ball right now, and you and I your, better have I better have on. made friends and connections on the way up to that because I won't even get in a game. You right. know, yeah, you're not gonna get picked up. I'll look like Billy Hoyle. There. They'll I'll walk in. They'll be like, who the fuck's that guy? No one's gonna pick him. Hopefully, somebody just gotta get a headband, dude. That's how, hey, that's how like that's how crazy it is. That in, in competitive, it can get even in these gyms. Is if you don't if you don't have your five. And you roll up on a Saturday morning when it's the whole place is oh, packed yeah. to people. You're gonna get cold. You'll sit. Well, you'll sit and watch yeah. four hours of basketball and never play. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you <laughs> sit no, there. Ain't nobody tooling you up. So there's no way. There's no way to get a turn in or something. Oh no, yeah. No, you won't get picked up. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, you won't get. You won't get picked <laughs> up. What will happen if you're like, hey, I get a turn. I'm oh, right people okay. just they, they don't they're even like, do the they'll, they'll tell you they're like, hey, go play on Tuesday mornings, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is for hey, you, you better you better have a squad or That's you better hilarious. you better have a reputation if you want to get picked up on Saturday wow. mornings. And so, well, I got a mediocre corner. spot for you at the high school up where I'm at, so oh, okay. I'll pull you in on that game. Yeah, yeah you'll have to tell me like <laughs> you lo- you'd be fine in this. Uh, okay. Yeah, dude. Yeah, so I like to start there. Now the 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 problem with that though, the danger it was. The, the less, like, I can't start it at such a low level that you have just a bunch of, like, park kids playing. Because then they, you get injured. Because then kids just do stupid. Aggressive. Yeah, kids that don't play the game right, that are just out there just running around. the hell out of you. Yeah, and yeah. that's how you get hurt. That's how I tore my ACL. Someone falling on my knees. It's like, that was just like a stupid other mm. person doing it to me, right? So, yeah, there's definitely, like, a place where I'll play at a certain level of my game. When my game gets to a certain place, then I can graduate. <laughs> speaking, speaking of bouncy, we, we we built a trampoline in the backyard, like a legit one. Yeah. Justin came over, got to you. Did I tell you guys when I tried it? Did I, I tell you guys about this? It, yeah. Did yeah. I tell you mm-hmm. what, what that was like? Bro, I, I jumped on it, called it up. Oh, shit. I got down, bro. <laughs> I wish I had a video like, of you jumping hey, on a trampoline. Hey, dude. my wife was there. I'm like, oh, I, I'm <laughs> sorry you saw that, honey. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> 
Sorry, babe. Not my proudest I gotta, moment. I gotta go do something sexy yeah, real quick yeah, to yeah. reverse yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go deadlift right <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. You wanna watch, you watch me switch? deadlift real quick? Oh, no. Oh, damn, I wish I would have seen that. Oh, <laughs> yeah, like a little, like a scream. Oh, I'm getting high. Oh, yeah. I, feel, I feel like I can see him like flapping his flapping his Immediate arms. pucker, dude. <laughs> I don't scream, though. I don't scream, though. <laughs> If I scream like out, a hummingbird, you just, <laughs> I feel like that's really accurate. Dude. No, really no, feel like there was no scream. There was no weird scream. Wow, oh, it's terrible. But I, I, I'm, it's you know, I'm, I'm having a little bit of a fitness like uh, what do we call it? crisis right now? Oh God. Yeah, no. So I've been, I, you know, I'm, I'm really, I'm actually, maybe, maybe I am, maybe I'm not, but I feel like I am right now. So we'll see. Don't hold me to this, but I'm really trying to like, okay, we talked to so many people live. We help all these people who have a dysfunctional relationship with exercise and supplements and all that stuff. And I'm like, oh, you know, I should probably visit my my relationship with this stuff, you know. So this week, um, doing my normal, you know, workout schedule, and we have family coming because we, you know, Easter, you know, we got the holiday coming up or whatever. And uh, Jessica's like, hey, do you do you would you mind working out, you know, in the garage on this day instead of going to the gym? And I'm like, no, I love the gym or whatever. And then I pause. I'm like, maybe I should take the rest of the week off. Maybe Ooh. I should just not. Whoa. at all yeah. work out for the rest of the week. And so I told her, I said, you know, this is a good opportunity for me to challenge myself because I never, never miss workouts. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I worked out this morning and I literally got a grand total of probably four hours of sleep last night because yeah. my daughter- You totally would not tell your client to do that. No. Mm -hmm. So uh, so I'm going to take the rest of the week off and then when I get back into it, I'm going to try to revisit how- I don't I do know it. Does if that I make you sweat thinking about that? It's very anxious right now. Yeah, I don't know if I want you. <laughs> I don't know if I want you to fix this dysfunction right now. I know. <laughs> I don't think we need one maniac. Yeah, yeah that's gonna put a lot of pressure on Justin. <laughs> yeah, what yeah. you know, you're getting if I turn into a skinny man. basketball guy, you start losing all your gains. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Justin's gonna have to really step the fuck up. No, I'm, you know I'm, I'm feeling saying? good right now. I'm not trying to. Because the only thing that was okay with me losing the bodybuilder yeah. look was everyone's like, "Oh, well, Sal's fucking jacked yeah, right yeah, now. Okay. At least one of them knows well, what they're I'm doing." Doug and Justin, it's up to you guys. You know? No. So I love when we get comments from like people who don't know anything about us. Like, who the fuck are these guys? They don't even look like they work out. Oh my God. <laughs> Average schmoes. <laughs> That's so mean. Yeah. Everybody's so uh, mean. Yeah, bring yeah, so you get though why so many of these insecure fitness people have to do videos with their shirt off all the time just so they can prove, see, oh. look at my muscles. Jeez, I have look, them. I got muscles. It's, it's, it's bad, dude. It's a bad space. <laughs> a Speaking to me, like I told you guys, I, I didn't get any sleep last night. Man, I had one of those moments where I was just, I was angry with my, she's only, you know, she's, what is 16 months old? Would not sleep. I don't understand. <laughs> not sick. Nothing wrong with her. I, you know, I'm like, maybe she's sick. What's it? No, no, nothing. Just not sleep. I think she's going through one of those leaps yeah, where yeah, it just happens. they're learning <laughs> a lot because she just started walking. And so I think it's like a leap that's going on because the brain is forming all these new connections. Did you pull up the app? I felt that always helped Katrina I'm gonna and I. I'm going to find it. Yeah, because that I, always helped Katrina and I when we had those moments. Because it always connected. Yeah, and it calms you down. It does. Because there's a, there's that part it's of the parent. It's out of your control, yeah. Where you're just like, yeah, she's this, totally fine right now. Like, I, yeah, you're like, this makes no sense. We did this. Yeah. Our routine's normal. This and that. Like, what? Well, and then so, you see like, oh, okay, that well, makes so sense. Well, so last night, she's not sleeping all night, you know, on and off. Finally, Jessica's like, I'm going to have her stay in bed with us. So she takes her in bed. But she's not sleeping, so she's like pushing up against her mom the whole time. About 3 a.m., and I'm not sleeping. I'm in and out, but I'm not really sleeping well this whole time, right? Finally, you know, Jessica she asked me very nicely, can you please, you know, try putting her down because I just, I'm so tired or whatever. And I'm like, this is one of those moments where you reflect and like, what a dick. I'm like, <laughs> I got up. I'm just kind of angry because I'm already, I'm mad. Like, we're not sleeping. And I take the baby and I put her in her bed and I walk away. And she starts screaming again, right? Yeah. And so Jessica's like, what are you doing? I'm like, she's going to cry for a little bit. So, of course, Jessica gets a baby, and her and I get in a little, like, mini argument about it. She goes downstairs, and I was left alone to reflect, you know? And I'm like, fuck, man. I just got mad at a baby. <laughs> I just yeah. got mad at a baby. It's your boy, dog. Hey, hey, oh, hey, it's hey, little, hey, dude. Hey, What's hey, going hey, on? Hey, hey, and, and my daughter, and I just let my frustration take over. My wife sincerely needed help, and she asked me nicely. Like, yeah. it wasn't like she did anything mean to me. So I'm like apologizing. and so. But good moment for us to connect, because that could have turned into something much bigger, you know, type of deal. Did you guys do the um the the ten minute cry method? That's what we used. That worked really well for us. Did you, know, you guys do that? I know there's a million different ways that everybody swears yeah, by. So that worked really good for us. You, you know, we did something else. So Aurelius was really tough. Uh, we did something else with him. But one of the the the, the people that we worked with, and we really liked, um, you know, where she got her data science, and it also log made logical sense. She said, "What you don't want is a child. A child needs to feel secure." So calling out to you and crying and that you show up and you're there helps them build security. It doesn't baby them. It doesn't make them, 
you know, some people will say a baby's your kid or whatever. <clears throat> and I, I believe that evolutionarily. It would make no sense for a baby in the middle of the night in the savannah right. to scream and mom leave the, the dinner bell basically going off for right. all the lions or whatever. Right. So that makes sense. So the process that we did was more like you, 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 you give them the security, but you slowly separate yourself. Mm -hmm. So, you know, at first you, you put the baby down and then you pat them on the back or rub their back. Yeah, you yeah. sing to them. Yeah, yeah. And then if they, as they start to calm down, you take your hand off. If they start up again, you, you do that, you rub their back. And then yeah. eventually you're just sitting by the bed yeah. and you sing to them when they cry. And then eventually you're outside the door, but when they cry, you pop your head back in or you sing from outside the door. And then eventually you sing into the monitor and then you don't do it at all. That's similar to what we did. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, it was cool. similar. Like I, so very similar. I would put Max down and I'd, I'd leave my hand there for a while. Yeah. And then I'd step away and I'd sit in his rocker. Mm -hmm. And then if he would- So he'd see you. Yeah, so he knew see. I was in there. And then I, and he, I'd let him fuss for a little bit and say, lay down, it's time for bed. I'd but just learn say, to so, soothe themselves so he, Yeah, so he yeah. knew I was there, but I wouldn't just but go to him. developing this. That's right, but I wouldn't, go, I wouldn't go there and, and pick yeah. him up every time. So he, I wasn't being trained that I get him every time he cries. And so then I would slowly do that. And then eventually the final break is the 10 minute thing where it's like, once we get out of the room, it was- we would never let him cry for 10 minutes. So mm. if it was a nine, we let him go up to nine minutes and 59 seconds. And then if it was yeah. at that, we come in and then restart yeah. it all over again and soothe. And what I found is like, it, it we never really went past 10. I think maybe a, a less than a handful of times we had to deal with I it. I tell you what 10. though, to people who don't have kids or people who've had kids who never dealt with this, because there are those parents out there like, oh, my kids slept at hours right out the gates. Like, you know, go screw yourself. Cause it's, 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 it's my friend. This but, kid's an angel. But again. if you're, if you're a parent and you have the average kid, like that is, it is so challenging. There's yeah. nothing like it. Nothing will test your patience or your sanity, like constant poor sleep. The right? hardest I think Sal is when, you, cause I never had a problem with like we, we, I, when was the last, we just had something with Max being off. If his behavior is off, and, you know, whether it's crying, not going to sleep or something like that. And I was inconsistent in something of the day. I don't have a problem with, like, I I own that. Like, we, I take that. Like, it's just like, God damn it. That's my fault. My fault, Got right? It. Where it's difficult is when you've been, like, consistent and, and then it's it. out of yeah. nowhere. And you're like, can't you can't connect yep. the dots to, yep. like, how could I have been a better well, parent, right? Well, like, well, what could I have done better here? Yeah, one of the worst things is just having expectations where you, you have plans and they get thrown out the window because kid won't go to sleep. Like last night, you know, we had two nights of bad sleep previous because of my three-year-old. So leading into this, we're like, let's start it early. We'll set the candles, <clears throat> no TV. Right. Like, we'll tell quiet like, get stories. Get ahead of it. Yeah. We'll tell yeah. quiet stories. Jessica's like, oh, I had the kids outside all day today. They're totally going to go <laughs> oh, down. Yeah. Lots of sun. Yeah. You know, like she's like, be exhausted. She's like, oh, let's watch that series that, you know, Adam and Justin were telling you, you know, you about the octopus one or whatever. Yeah. Oh my, and we're like excited, you know, yeah, like yeah. this is going to be, and we get to go to bed early oh, if we yeah. do this right. That definitely is because you got your guys' hopes all up. Oh, hopes were up. Yeah. We're going to connect and hang out together and boom, out the window, dude, until 3 a.m. Oh, uh, so, yeah. so yeah, that, when that, that happens, definitely just, makes it worse. Oh, it? Especially so. too, if she did all those things, because that used to be like the, the solid recipe. That's for, what I'm saying. Yeah. Like for us, it was like, man, if we get him outside in that sun and playing all day, like it was pretty set. We were going to get him down mm -hmm. pretty easy, but- that sucks if you do all the right things. Terrible. Yeah, that's to me, that's where it's hard. Like, I don't mind, or, or at least I never mind when, you know, it's part of a kid, raising a kid, is they're, they're going to be difficult yeah. sometimes. Especially if you're, like, driving and tra yeah, you're and, traveling. And, yeah, and, throws and like, I, like, for example, the other I remember what it was. Like, there was something that we just, we, Katrina and I both, like, I love that she does this, too. Like, she, like, Max uh, was, I'm sitting at the, the, the it was time for dinner, and uh, we were letting him play on his iPad. We get he's sick. He was sick, so we gave him more of it that day. We tend to loosen up the rules and boundaries on him when he's not feeling well. We're sure, little, like we're a little more understandable loose with like this the stuff that we hold him. So we, uh, we allowed him to play more than what he would normally get. And it was time time to eat. And I called him over to the the table, and he and he had his iPad with him. I said, no, 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 not your iPad. You just come here, Daddy. And he looked at me, and he was all sad. And he, he just started crying. And instead of us getting frustrated and mad about it, Katrina apologized to him. Oh, I'm I'm sorry, son. I let you play too much today. Yeah. And it was like, and that, and like, so instead of getting frustrated at him because now he's throwing a fit because he doesn't get to do that, it's like, well, us as parents allowed outside of that, we know what that does. We know that if he plays more in about 20, 30 minutes on that thing, like in a day, like it, yep. he's attached to you, it. Yeah. You know how powerful that is by, to apologize to your kid, by the way, when you really genuinely mean it mm -hmm. to show them mm -hmm. like, like that teaches your kid. I, I, like I remember, 
I think my mom apologized to me once. I don't think my dad ever did, but I know my mom did one time and I remember it mm -hmm. because it was so impactful. Bro, it's so yeah. dope that I've seen him before because she's done that consistently when like he has a behavior that is a result of us not doing good parenting that he, uh, I'm sorry, I had too much iPad. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, like so, so you know, I'm sorry, I didn't yeah. do good sleep last night. Like, he's yeah. like apologizing for, and because we've been consistent Dude, with Dude, you know what you know? this reminds me of? That I, I read a while ago and we did it with my three-year-old. So when a kid has a, let's say a, a scary experience or a tough experience, especially when they're young, you can retell the story and make it a funny or remember that thing that happened and change the, uh, the perspective. Yeah. So I'll tell you what happened, right? So, uh, we were, we were playing with the kids and Jessica was giving our three-year-old, uh, she had like this, I don't know what it was. It was like a biscuit with peanut butter and he was going to bite it. So he goes to bite it and bites her finger hard, like really hard. And she screams, ah, scares the crap out of him. He starts crying, scares the baby. She starts crying. Then she, and she's holding her finger. And it hurts really bad. Then she's holding both of them to try and calm them down. And eventually we got them calm and it was okay, but it scared the kids, right? So later, wait a couple days, I'm like, hey, hey, remember, remember when you thought mama's finger was a cookie? And I start laughing and he starts laughing <laughs> and Jessica starts laughing. Yeah. Oh my God, that was so funny. And then he's like, mama's finger got hurt. And I'm like, I'm all poor mama, but it wasn't a biscuit. And we start laughing. Like you change the story. And yeah. then when they look back on it, yeah. it's got a completely different uh, perspective. I thought that was so brilliant. It, is. it also is shows, it also highlights how the, the negative side of that in families where you normalize bad behavior, right? Oh, like, it could go bad. It yeah. could go the other way, right? That's what happens when you grow up in a, in a household where there's violence or abuse or lots of fighting and all this craziness. And it's so consistent and normalized that that's just how things are, that we, we don't even overreact to it anymore. That, that kid ends up being an adult who then is attracted to a relationship like that because wow. they interpret that. It could that go both as, ways. Yeah, it goes both wow. ways. And so it's very powerful I mean, it's great to be able to pick that up and see that and to reverse engineer basically that for the bet for the good, what you did. But you know, this is a, a thing that I, I'm always, I always think about as parents, like there, I mean, we're, we are 100% laying the foundation to how they view the world and communication and interpret everything, man. And so to ever think that how, I mean, I, Katrina and I even believe that where our emotional state is around him affects him. Like our, does. Inter you, our energy. Like you know if, why? Yeah. So, so that's that's a fact. So children, you, they actually data on this. Children are so attuned mm -hmm. to their parents' uh, emotions and moods because that is the person that helps regulate. It's like the the pilot on an airplane or the the flight attendant. If the plane's rocking and you look at the flight attendant and they look chill, okay, we're fine. You see the flight attendant freak out, then you start to freak out. Yeah. And not only that, so kids are super attuned to how mom and dad are acting or whatever. So when your kid starts to act up and you think it's out of nowhere, oftentimes it's because of you. It's, I've noticed that about me. It's I'm like, almost, oh, it's I think it's almost it's always. Times, yeah. I mean, to me, like Katrina and I, we've trained ourselves that when it's like that, like- You ever notice when you're in a good mood, they're in a good mood? Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you're in a bad when, mood, they're when, in a bad when mood? When we, when we next, like instantly it's like, okay, self-reflect, like, okay. That's what I mean. Like when you have a situation like you have where you can't connect it to you, that's where I'm frustrated. Yeah. If I can connect it to me, like I can grow, I can learn. I go, yeah. oh, you know what? Mm -hmm. I, that's what I get. I brought work home. Katrina, or the, the baby heard me being frustrated about something that was going on in the business. It had nothing to do with him. wasn't even the same room, but he felt my energy. Yeah. Therefore, it changed his mood. And so it's like, okay, I got to be aware of that. But when things don't, or when things don't, don't line up with yeah. anything, that's where it's tough. You it's know? Still, still lesson. I still yeah. learned a lesson, which is like, be more compassionate. Jeez, <laughs> I was so mad, you know? You get mad at your kid. I, and know, your I, wife. Can, I can diffuse so much more effectively when I can not allow it to to get me frustrated and get me like emotionally invested in whatever's going because i mean it happens like so regularly they'll be like just getting ready in the morning or something and like one of the kids is just like on one you know it's like ah! <laughs> and, and you know and and i could sense it because then like either courtney or me will kind of get the the brunt of it and then you know if we don't react and we don't allow that to kind of and then, okay and then you know, I can usually diffuse, I can make a joke, I could kind of, you know, um, come in and change the the sort of narrative and, and uh, you know, reframe it a bit and, and, it, and it works. And it's just like, okay, now they're, you know, they, they're out of it. But it's like, if I can't do that, it's it's like a bad day. There's, there's this type of, I, I don't like the title of it, 
And in fact, I'm going to find an expert to come on our show to, to talk about, but it's called, and I don't like the, the, the way they labeled it because it, it's misleading. It's called gentle parenting. I don't, th- I don't know if you guys have heard this, uh-uh. but the gist of it, and I'm not an expert in, in any way. Like I said, I want to have someone on, but the gist of it is that you, you, are, you, you understand what is um, developmentally appropriate uh, behavior. So like a two-year-old who throws their food on the floor, it, that's impulsive and they haven't yet learned the skills on right. how to control impulse. They're still testing a 12 year old. Yeah. 12 year old throws food on the floor. Like, okay, this is a different <laughs> yeah. conversation, but that's kind of what it's, what it's based on and understanding that oftentimes when kids act a particular way that isn't, you know, maybe desirable that there's a need that isn't met. And as a parent, it's your job to figure out, okay, what's the need that's not being met? Why is my kid at, you know, is it more time with me? Is it because they're mm. underslept? They need more sleep? Is it because they're, you know, maybe something happened earlier and they don't feel like they can, nobody's talked to them about it? So it's this really interesting um, way of looking at, you know, raising kids. And I, I thought, I think it's absolutely brilliant. But the title of it makes it sound like, like it's, it's like it's, there's no structure, no boundaries. It's not that at all. No, it's, okay. it's got very, uh, very I'd good I'd be structure interested to, to read or at least to talk to somebody about it. Yeah, I found somebody <laughs> that's really good that, uh, that um, I'll have come on the show. I'm, I'm really struggling with the, you know, and I was just sharing before we got on the podcast with you guys, just how uh, my son is so in tune with emotion and because of all this, this, this great stuff that we've done and all this positive stuff. And then the, you see the other side of that where he's just so sensitive. Like they did this egg thing today right for hunting for eggs and they line all the kids up and they have all these eggs out there and they you know they get them all ready all right ready go and a lot of these kids are faster bigger than my son and so they all take off in front of him and he only takes about four or five steps and then he just he puts his hand over his face and he just starts crying and he's just like they're gonna get all the eggs and the teacher set it up to where every kid can only get 12 eggs so my kids that's the problem that i see because the natural lesson there if if there is a lesson is Oh, I didn't move fast enough. Mm-hmm. I didn't get as many eggs. Then yeah. you as dad, right. all you got to do is show up and be compassionate. That's how I that feel. That sucks, buddy. I'm sorry. You don't even have to say anything. He'll figure it out. Like, I got to be faster next time. Yeah. But they yeah. give all the kids the same. So they make them race, but everybody gets eggs. Well, and egg. also you get to see kind of which kids shine in that moment in terms of like, if it's the kid that like gets all of them and then he looks and he sees like, you know, somebody that's having a really hard time will like he offer yeah. eggs to them or something. Yeah, You're yeah. not allowing these kids to self-regulate. That's, I, that's how I would have liked. That's dude. how I, it was, I think that where they the failed as a school is by, like you said, they turn it into a competition, but then it's not really a competition because then you let everybody get 12. So you don't get the lesson. Yes. All, all you get is the hard without So it's the, like, why do that? Learning. Instead, yeah. why not just let it be a free for all and then let's see how the kids regulate and then teach through that process. Like we, we did like hunting with eggs uh, last year with Max and Max was actually the older kid with little kids. And in that situation, does fine because he's grabbing them quicker than them. And then he did exactly what you said. Like he had all of them, and the little kid was having. And so he takes some of his oh, eggs come on. out. What a great right. kid! And, like, he, and he's giving like the other yeah. kid what a great some kid. of his. That's kid, you know what I'm saying? So he's got those incredible qualities. But man, when he's the yeah. he's the underdog, and and everybody blasts past him and stuff like that, like he doesn't have that that drive. That makes me so that. upset because uh, what the, what they did is they took the hard part of competition and they left it, but they didn't include the, the part lesson. where you grow. Yeah. 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 So it's like, why strive? You ever hear that experiment where the professor tells all the students, um, I'm going to take the top grade and I'm going to average it with the worst grade and everybody's going to get their grade. It was something like that. Uh And eventually everybody just started getting an F because why strive if it's going to go down here? It killed the motivation. Yeah. Yeah, So like why have kids compete if there's nothing at the end where you you can sit down with them and say, Oh, I'm sorry that that didn't work for you because that's a really good lesson. Hey, that sucks. You know, I'm sorry about that. And they'll figure it out. Like, ah, oh, yeah, maybe I got to be fast. Yeah, I, there's the other part of me too that I. So, I mean, I told you guys that you know after talking to the teachers and everything like that, that he his emotionally he's still young for his class, right? So he's he's already young for his class age wise, mm-hmm. and emotionally he's he's younger than a lot of kids, and so they've recommended that we we hold him back one yeah. more year. And so it will like there's that part of me as a dad of like trying to also be patient, like, you know, well, maybe this will be different in a year when he's yeah. more developed and he's more confident in these, maybe- How some old these, is he right now? So he's four. He has a big difference between uh-huh. a four and a five-year-old. Yeah. Right. So Huge difference. Right. And so I, I understand that. Like, I mean, I, I didn't go to school till I was five. My son's been in school three, having to learn all this stuff yeah, and do yeah, all these yeah. things. So I have to recognize too that- <laughs> yeah. You know, okay, what happens when it's next year? Maybe he's more the confident kid and maybe he's more aggressive then at that point. So I'm trying to balance that, 
you know, oh, I want him to be more aggressive and yeah. be, you know, less sensitive about something like that. I mean, hey, tough shit, kid. You get no eggs. You know what I'm saying? You got to be faster <laughs> next time. Like, there's that part of that dad in me that wants to be like that, right? Because yeah, yeah. there's a good lesson there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. That's fucking life. You know, yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying? When you get older as an adult, there's not 12 eggs for everybody. No. You know what I'm it's like, yeah. it's not how it works. <laughs> yeah. And you know if they saying? promise everybody the same amount of eggs, yeah, yeah. get the hell out. Yeah, They're yeah. about it's to put not you we want to be, right? So, <laughs> gulag or something. so, yeah. So, I, you know, I have this push pull feeling. It's very good that probably his mom was there to handle it because she probably handled it better than I would have handled something like that because that that part of me like i just that hurts my heart inside because <laughs> yeah. i don't want my of all the things i tell you that well, I, like I, I want my son to be able to overcome adversity and have thick skin to be tough i mean that, and confident like that's those are the attributes that i want to pass on to him and, and i know that i got a lot of mine uh from the unfortunate shit that i went through so it's like you know and he's not getting none you of know, that i wonder i wonder where you'd be if you had like a good like a really like good like non-traumatizing child like what if you would be like I don't know, like Elon, like, you know, who knows where you, maybe, maybe in spite of all that, that's where you're at. Cause that's a tough situation to come out the way that you did. Yeah. Not I, a lot of people would have done that. Yeah. I don't know. You know, I, I, I think it's because I think you would have been done. Well, I no wonder if you've been point. wired yet yeah, to seek out like adversity anyways, you know, it's like, it's one of those things like you wonder genetics, like the coding in there, you know, cause it, there's some kids like that, that, uh, are in a really privileged, like beneficial environment, grew up great, but are just like so incredibly driven yeah. and, and just are killers. I've got the, that young kid, JT, I tell you about it. Like yeah. he's my hope, right? Cause like when I hear his dad's story, it reminds me of my story. Oh. Self-made he guy. Grew up, he grew up well. And, well yeah. Up. And so, but he grew up extremely privileged, very, very privileged, hmm. but he's would never think he's a privileged kid because yeah. he's got incredible work ethic. He's incredibly successful. Yeah, awesome. He's yeah. very self-aware. He's smart. Like, I mean, he's a 20 something year old kid kid hanging out with a bunch of 40 year olds and i would say he's one of the most emotionally mature ones you, that of all of us in the group you know it's like, interesting you know that they okay so this is connected trust me you, you know you could clone your i think we talked about this. you can clone your dog yeah yeah so if your dog dies and they say some of the genetic traits are in it they so. say some of them the same but they say they're not the same dog yeah. so they'll yeah. say oh you think you're gonna get the exact same dog but you don't no because some of the behaviors yeah because i mean i know that different. remember i told you that i mean i know that from nature nurture is yeah, i watched how, nature yeah. yeah i watched how i when i had my two bulldogs how i really my poor or my first one, Bentley, the older, bigger one, the bigger, stronger one. I was so hard on him with the puppy Mozzie because he was a puppy and he was little and he was smaller. And that I would like, I would get him, I'd whack him if he would ever mm -hmm. attack him or, or wrestle aggressively with him. I didn't let nature kind of take its course and let him defend themselves and stuff like that. I, I intervened so much that when he, they got to a teenage years, he would he was afraid to defend himself because and then it just always remained that oh, way. Oh yeah. And so then the other the younger little one would attack him all the time and punk him and just like treat him. <laughs> and it was like, I know I created that. Like yeah. that wasn't genetically in that yeah, dog. Yeah. Like that's yeah. definitely environmental that like I created that for that. So yeah. that's no different than kids. Yeah. Like if you so there's some there's a little bit of both. And I'm sure there's things to your point about like what I saw. Like I was in sports, right? And I think if I was in a in a in an environment with a good father figure who helped me learn lessons through sports other than like trying to figure it out myself. Like I, I learned those lessons, but a lot of those are like later. Like when I reflect, they go like, oh yeah, yeah, I learned how to work with others. And oh yeah, I wasn't the most talented. So I had to put in the extra work. It wasn't like I was doing it because I had a dad who was just like, hey son, mm -hmm. you're, they're, they're more athletic and gifted than you. If you want to beat them out, you need to do these things. I had to figure that out. And then looking back, like maybe if I had like a, a household, like you're saying, and I played things like sports, because I know, like, when my son gets in sports, I can't wait to – I hope he does. Part of why I hope he does, not just because I want to vicariously live through him, but also because I think it's a really easy tool – to teach some of That's these lessons. That's a great way to teach. It's them. such a great, I mean, you They're have They're all to, there. Yes. It's the world that's there's put in a game. Yes. Leadership in there, their cooperation, how to follow winning, proper, how to losing, all like, of it. Yes. Struggle, like controlling challenge. emotion, yep. being disciplined. Yeah. No, I, there's so many lessons within sports. And of course, the, the, the kid might naturally learn some of it, but imagine having a good parent who knows how to see that stuff and coach through. You know, it. along those lines, uh, I've had now several people tell me this who are, um, you know, either psych psychologists, therapists, or uh, who we consider expert on, you know, raising children. And they say that if you're the kind of parent that thinks about and actively looks t uh, for ways to be a better parent, you already are among the top 10% of parents. So if you're that kind of mom or dad that like reads about it, thinks about it, how can I be a better whatever? 
you're already killing it because most people don't even think. The bar's pretty low, I guess. Huh? It, well, I think <laughs> that, that's just right. It's, it's, there's two sides to that. <laughs> I mean, that's how I look at it. <laughs> well, Let's I, do better, you guys. Yeah. You know what most people do is they just default to how they were raised. They don't question anything. No, you're right. Yeah, yeah. That's the truth. The truth that's, is. That's yeah, really what is. They, was modeled is that, what they repeat. Yeah. Totally. I mean, I've been I've been saying that for a while now that I, I mean, I told Katrina that when we first got together that I, I want to be a generational character in my family, which is also why I waited for a while to have my son. I wanted to be more prepared to be that person, to shift to shift that completely because I don't want I don't want to pass down I don't want to inherit any of a lot of the the traits in our in our family tree I don't want to pass any of them down like I want to break all that mm -hmm. stuff and so a, a lot of that comes with just emotional maturity and, and and being wiser and more experienced so that was part of waiting as long as I it's did. the it's the hardest job dude hardest yeah. job in the world <laughs> anyway I got to tell you guys that um we we work with Caldera and it's got to be the one of the more interesting questions or compliments that I often, I've had now several people talk about my skin mm. specifically, and I recommend Caldera. I, that nobody's ever said anything to me about my skin before. Uh, it's until, the, you know, <clears throat> maybe it's cause I'm older. I wonder yeah. if it's cause I'm older and I they expect my skin to look probably a the way. hair color. Like, cause I've had that before, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think they're just you got like nice surprised skin for like, a 60 year old, you know, have like wrinkles and like, you're doing pretty well. I'm like, oh, thanks. It's also the, I just sell it's though. also the yeah. brand and partnership that I get the most, uh, uh, non-fitness friends and people connected to me that reach out. So I get a lot of people that either one have seen the commercial, even if they haven't seen the commercial, mm. they've heard about the brand or they know that it's connected to me somehow and they're curious about it. They have nothing to do with fitness. They're not mm -hmm. like into health at all, but they are very interested in looking younger and feeling younger type of deal. And so Caldera has been popular. I think speaking of Caldera, I think that they do the best. And this is, a, this is to all the other partners that are listening. They do the best with uh, commercials and ads. Oh, because they they clip our show or clip what we say, put it in a great ad. Yeah, they're the best looking ones. I, it, it is. Always looks good. I mean, and, and we like we're about to do this right now. When we hang these mics up, we have to go and do a photo shoot for one of our other partners, and so that and it's like we love oh, photo shoots. You guys least, love no, it's our love. least favorite it's the thing. thing I hate the most, <laughs> yeah, the, it's crazy. It's, it's and we've tried to deter like telling people, no, you got to pay us this much to do that, and they're like, okay, it's like, oh, God, yeah, no, all like, right, oh, fine. Trying to get away. From now, what do you think it is? Do you think I, th I feel like I? It's because I hate. It's the least authentic. Yes, it feels fake. It's dude. the least authentic. Even though it's you not, feel like the guy with the sh the protein shaker cup, like yeah, yeah. Like it just <laughs> appeared right here. Weird, you know. Like, I can't. Ugh. I can't do it. I'm making fun of myself. Well, this is uh, why yeah. I like Caldera so much because what they do is they they do a really good job of cutting these natural commercials and stuff that where we talk about them in there, and and that's very authentic. This is not this is an authentic conversation. I had no idea that's what you're going to say or yeah. how you're going to say it. And so that it comes off that way. And like, I mean, every one of us, or at least I know you and I are wearing Viore, Viore pants and clothes. Like just having that on and wearing that, that's all authentic and normal for me. Right. But then if I had to go out and go pose, you know, <laughs> wearing them, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. To me, that's just like. Or like drinking your so your well, it, it, or, it, I don't know. There's this, it, it, to me, it's always been interesting because there's like, I've hung around models. Obviously I do a lot of the shoots for our maps programs mm -hmm. and for a lot of these things. And, and like, even before that, I was interested in maybe like going the actor route and all that, but I just couldn't do it. Cause everybody's so weird. Mm -hmm. You know, they're just like, it, it takes a certain kind of personality to really like, Hey, yeah, like, wait. you know, look at me. Well, you maybe know? hey, maybe part of why we don't like it is we suck at it. <laughs> I mean, that's the real, that's maybe the real, that's, real. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Maybe, maybe, maybe if we were really good at it, we'd be embrace it a little bit more. Right. Say, but we like, we, we suck. It's what it is. It doesn't come natural to any one of I us. I like to think we're just too good at beating ourselves well, and you, not something else. See, that's well, what I like. I like the positive spirit. Yeah, I don't like Adam spirit. But hey. yeah, you might be right too. Well, you know, what it reminds me of, so you guys, I don't know. I mean, I think I've talked to you guys about this before. I was so resistant to uh, practice posing for men's physique. And you have, there's oh, like yeah. a, there's a, you yeah. have, there's a routine. You yeah, gotta know, do. Dude, you got to do a routine. That's making me laugh. You, you, yeah, oh. I remember how stiff. Bro, you I was so. Hey, now that I know you as well as I do, at yes, first I didn't know you it super makes well. perfect sense. But knowing you as well as I know now, I was like, how did you, oh. how did you get through that? Bro, you, you know how funny, how funny this was? I actually, I would die. for most of my <laughs> prep, okay, getting ready for my very first show, I had the attitude that I was, I'm going to smoke these fools in my physique so much. I don't even have to pose. Like that's going to walk around. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to walk up. I'm going to do <laughs> this and then I'm like, out. That was like literally my plan. My plan was like, I'm just going to smoke. Just gonna walk around. Yeah. I'm just going to smoke everybody physique wise. You like so what you bad. see? You like it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then I don't even have a routine. I don't even know what I'm doing up there. You know what I'm saying? And the, hey, the truth is though, like, and so that there was a lot of people in the crowd that like booed. It was a big deal because 
it, I did literally show up my very first show and smoked everybody like leanness oh, yeah, wise yeah, and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I didn't, I only placed fourth yeah. and it was cause my posing was terrible. Uh, when I look back at the pictures and the photos, like when you're supposed to do your old lat spread and show your back, like my shit was all, you know, it looked, it looked terrible. You know what I'm saying? Well, I'm sure my physique looked great, but like if you can't present it very well, it's awkward, doesn't do well to present. So I That's totally, hilarious. it reminds me of that. Like, and the truth was I sucked at it. And so I had to practice a little bit out of it. Never did I like it. Never did I get good at it. But now that I know you as well as I do, it's like, oh my God, you signed up for that. That's uh, so I hate, that was, <laughs> it was all the start of business. That, it was, it was, it was all. And that, and that makes sense. Knowing you as well as I do. <laughs> Edible pose. <laughs> you will literally do for a business. Yeah. You know, I, makes sense. It makes I loved it. Sense. I was like, yeah. All right. You do that. All right. Today's shout out is mindpumptrainercourse.com. This is a three day free course uh, that we run and we teach trainers how to sell bigger packages, how to present personal training, how to forecast uh, what you're going to make for the month or the year. It's totally free. So it's mindpumptrainercourse.com. Children's multivitamins are typically just candy. They're gummy candies and they don't even have adequate nutrients with the kind of nutrients that children need. There's a company called Haya that is very different. This is not a sweetened candy. This is a multivitamin that kids will like, but also has the adequate nutrients that children need. It's not a high sugar candy. It's an actual multivitamin and your kids will like it. Go check them out. Go to hayahealth.com forward slash mind pump. And on that link, you'll get 50% off your first order. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Maggie from Colorado. Hi, Maggie. How, How can we help you? Hi. Good morning. This is so cool. I'm so nervous. Um, <laughs> so uh, I just want to super quickly say thank you guys so much for all that you do. Just, yeah, thank you. Um, so my question, I am a textbook hard gainer. I My maintenance is like over 3,500 and I'm 5'4". Like I'm wow. little and um, I've gained about 40 pounds over the course of four years. So don't freak out. But I used to be at yeah, 84 pounds. Um, so that's been, yeah. But the thing is, I still just look small. Like if people had to guess looking at me, they'd guess I'm about a hundred pounds. And I'll like, don't get mad, but I'll compare myself to influencers or other women. And I just don't have that muscle fullness or like any feminine shape at all. And I just, I'm tired of getting mistaken for a 12 year old, you know? So like, why do I just still look so small, even if I eat and train and it feels like I'm doing everything right. And I just like, I look muscular, but I just look so small. Yeah. Well, Ma yeah. Maggie, you're, did I, am I reading this correctly? You're only 18 right now. Yeah. And, and I, so I'm curious, it's like, I've heard the term muscle maturity. Like, is yeah. that just. I just need to age five years. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, well, look, you come a long ways already if you've already put 40 on 30, pounds. 40 pounds yeah, in the few legit. years and yeah. you're only 18 right now. So, uh, no, but, you're, you're kicking ass. I yeah. think what we need to do is, uh, is, is um, have a different understanding of what's going on. Okay. I don't know many people, uh, especially women, who've gained, you know, 30 pounds of lean body mass over that period of time. I don't know very many young ladies that are not afraid to consume over 3000 calories and, and lift weights or who have the confidence to say, I want to look like I have more muscle. Part of the problem, Maggie, is that you're, you're kind of being a little hard on yourself. You're not really being fair and you are, you're breaking the cardinal rule. You're comparing yourself to a lot of really dysfunctional. Really? Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're comparing yourself to Photoshop the Photoshop distorted yeah, that will images it, that don't do that. that I mean, the best advice I could give an 18 year old like yourself is to literally shut off social media. Don't go on it or intentionally change the algorithm for pro personal growth posts, not posts that will uh, either unintentionally or intentionally cause you to compare yourself to other people. Uh, because what's happened, and I'm I'm 100% on this. I'm very very confident with this. You have a distorted view of what's going on. You are crushing it. And at your age, oh my God. I mean, yeah. and, and you're going to continue to develop a strong, healthy, mobile physique because you're just a kid. Like you haven't even come, you haven't even got to the point yet where things really start to accelerate. So my advice is have fun with this and don't be so hard on yourself. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't think we need to uh, change anything, but I am curious about uh, like, what's your activity look like? I mean, are you, do you do sports or something? Like, what are you doing that to, to have to consume that much? 
literally nothing and, and it's and it's all your guys's fault I, since i started <laughs> listening to you i used to do two hours on the stairmaster every day and i was eating like two thousand calories and stuff um but now i just lift and get my steps in and sprint a couple times a week and that's it yeah so it, it's probably <laughs> genetic a little bit but yeah you're kicking ass yeah, are, are you yeah. what, are, are you following one of our programs no, I can't decide which one to follow. Like I think anabolic, but I love like the bodybuilding type, like like body part split. So I I don't know. I don't know which one to pick. Do, do anabolic first and then you yeah, can do split afterwards. Are you well, we well an awesome one here's out. another I mean another option is would you be interested in just seeing how strong you can get with the big three? I I I've been thinking about powerlifting, but I just don't know if I can build like a, a aesthetic muscle doing oh. that. Oh yeah. I, Oh yeah, you okay. want to you, yeah yeah. You're talking about you want to get build muscle and and look mm -hmm. you know bigger or more muscular, but like yeah. especially at your age, like get strong. Nothing will do that better than getting strong. Literally, like maybe okay. maybe ten years from now, you can you know getting stronger at some point. You'll hear you haven't even come you haven't even hit your limit as to what you can do in some of those big lifts. Do you know what your lifts look? What are your lifts like right now? Do you do you know what you squat, deadlift, bench press, any of that stuff? Um, I have never benched. I, I get too scared to, um, and my, my deadlift is like almost 200 and my squat is 135. So I definitely have a lot of room to grow. Yeah. Maggie following power lift, you're going to blow your mind with, 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 with the really? develop. Okay. Yes. You're going to get, you're going to see some serious gains by just getting stronger in those lifts. And I think that's the best program for you right now. I really do. I think you'll fall in love with getting stronger and then you're going to get the side effect results that you're looking for just through getting stronger at this point of your, your career of, of training, I should say, like, that's what you want to focus on. By, by the way, I don't know very many people that can gain 30 pounds of lean body mass in that period of time. Yeah. That's you're, phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, Maggie, I'm going to have Doug put you in the private forum too. Cause I'd love as you're, since you're going through power lift, uh, the first time and you're, and you don't seem confident in bench. Like if you go through uh, an exercise, video it and post it in there, and then we can critique it. So we can go, we can help you awesome. gu guide you through the process. So I'll have Doug put you in there. Let's do power lift now, and then we can talk about split or aesthetic or something like that afterwards. I can't I, wait to see what you do yeah. with those lifts. Yeah. you're gonna, you're gonna blow. It's gonna blow your mind. But once you get going, get a get a video up on there so we can see your lifts and then uh, help guide you through it. Awesome! Thank you so much. You got it. All right. Thanks Maggie. for calling in. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> I have a tough time believing that she doesn't look like she have, totally lifts weight. She's going to be, she's gonna be <laughs> jacked. There's no way. I know she's 30 jacked. pounds of lean body mass. Eating 3,000 calories, 120 to 125 at 5'4". No, I mean, she probably, she, you know, I know she has a distorted view. I, yeah, I bet you she's in the gym working out and other people are like, oh my God. Look, right. at that, look at that you know, I, I do, especially I, people that know her really well. Yeah. There, There is a thing too to be said. Um, I do think that uh, men notice it more, experience it more as far as like the muscle maturity and then like the difference of like the the male body at 18 versus like 26. Like, I don't know about you. you remember, like, I mean, I looked completely different, even lifting weights and, and muscular as a 18, 19 year old boy, the 30 year old version. I of think it has more to do because there's a lot of speculation around that. It probably has more to do with the thinning of this, like all the things that people don't want as they get older, I think is what contributes to that grainy, what they would call muscle mature look. Now, the truth is in real life, uh, you, you know, that it, it, it just looks more hardcore, I would say. Could, you could probably accomplish that by getting shredded. But I, I mean, she's comparing herself in ways that is not that are not benefiting her. Yeah. Um, you know, her height, her weight, her strength, what she's eating, what she's doing. Do you know any 18 year old young ladies that have no, done that? No, if you're if if she was a client and these were our results, I'd be highlighting her as totally. like the perfect example yeah, of what right. I want my clients to be able to do, she's right? A like billboard. she's not doing any cardio either. Like so she's literally she does a couple sprints at Sedline a couple times a week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the rest is just straight strength training. Yep. She came from eating two thousand calories and 80, 90 pounds and is now eating thirty five hundred. And I mean, come on. Yeah. I mean you, you, she'll be. I think she'll be be able to pull. Like she said, she deadlifts in the low two hundred. I bet that'll well, get up to the mid twos. And it sounds like she hasn't put a lot of energy in, like really trying to get strong in those lifts, right? Mm -hmm. Like she doesn't even bench Especially press. Especially at that age, like the thing that will develop your physique the most, because at some point it changes because there's a limit. But at her age, just get strong. Like if you're watching this and you're young yeah, you and you're working out, on. like the, the the what will point you in the direction in terms of getting closer to your progress faster is simply getting stronger. Nothing will do it more than that. Our next caller is Katie from Wisconsin. Hi, Katie. How can we help Hi. you? Hi. Hello, hello. Uh, excellent. 
Thank you guys so much for uh, being willing to answer my question. I'm pretty new to your guys' programs. Um, I went through uh, MAP Starter and I'm now doing anabolic. I'm about three weeks in. And I've got some questions about the trigger sessions and how I can customize those um, for what I'm looking to work on. Um, ideally, I'd like to work on some core strength as well as neck strength. Mm, interesting. Let's talk about the neck strength for yeah. a second. What that's that's not something somebody typically tries no. <laughs> to train or work on, except for maybe the grapplers or wrestlers that I've worked with. Do you yeah. have neck pain? Is there something that we're trying to do you correct? Wear helmets or yeah, what's I the... I do. I wear a helmet for work, mm. um, and so I get a lot of uh, neck pain if mm -hmm. I'm having to wear it regularly while I'm at work. Wow, interesting. Okay, so for neck strengthening specific movements. Um, I'm going to send you Maps Prime Pro unless you already have it. Do you have Prime Pro? I, yep, I do have Prime Pro. Okay. Yep. I want you to do the neck movements in there neck cars, yeah. to work on neck mobility and strengthening. Uh, I don't okay. want you to do any um, straight up uh, straight no neck building exercises until you get really good. You know, here's what happens with neck strengthening, and this happened to me uh, back in the day is you want to strengthen the neck, but you don't want to move to the end ranges of motion right. that the spine allows. Very because, delicate dance. Yes, because then you can cause a lot of problems. So you see a lot of football players and wrestlers later on in life developing issues, and some of them are because of the neck exercises uh, that we did. I think with the mobility from Prime Pro uh, coupled with anabolics shrugs, it should probably do a lot for her as far as support. Yeah, so uh, with the trigger sessions, I mean, the question is how do you put those together? There's a couple things that happen from trigger sessions. One is this kind of localized effect, localized meaning like the target muscle that you're getting a little pump in. But really, mostly, it's this kind of systemic effect that is enhancing what happened dur during those foundational workouts, okay? So ideally, now you can pick specific trigger sessions and say, oh, I'm just going to do two or three core exercises, um, and that'll be my trigger sessions. You can do that. But in my experience, people tend to get better results when they do like one core exercise and then maybe two or three other exercises that generally works the entire body, moves the other entire body. So you might do like a, a core exercise, a pressing movement and a rowing movement or something like that, or like a lunge, a core exercise and a rowing movement or something like that. And remember the trigger sessions are supposed to be low intensity. You're just getting blood to pump into the muscles. You're not looking for a workout. You might get a little bit of a burn during them, but really you're just, you just want them to move. You just want to move and contract the muscles a couple times a day. I mean, it's, it's not a bad idea though with the anabolics protocol is literally just add one or two core exercises to her trigger days. Like it's not a trigger. Like I wouldn't, I would still do band, you know, curls and flies and all the normal trigger session uh, movements. And then just, you could do a, an active plank, totally. an active plank. Yeah, you could. And some like, so you could ease those trigger days are low enough volume of training. Like we wouldn't encourage somebody to do like a, a full body, yeah, workout. full body workout or bench presses or squats or something like that. But doing some core exercises on those days, I think is totally fine. Uh, but just don't overdo it. You don't need to, you don't have, uh, you haven't been doing a, a lot of that already. So just add one core exercise or two core exercises to those uh, trigger days before you do your trigger sessions. Um, and then that makes now your, your, you know, 20 minutes of, of exercises. I think that's perfect. There's totally, totally fine. And then the next program, I think performance, you're going to get a lot of good core strength oh, yeah. uh, exercises built into the routine. So look forward to that afterwards. Since I see that you're now an anabolic, um, once you move out of that, move into performance, and then you're really going to ramp up like the core strengthening stuff. I'm assuming you're relatively new to strength training because you, you started a map starter. Um, I, I have had like a long break. So I was a three sport athlete in high school and a two sport athlete in college and graduated and basically stopped doing everything and have had kids now and have gotten into my career and I'm just ready to, to get back into being more fit. Ooh, fun. Awesome. Yeah. Nice. Fun. How's your, yeah. how are you feeling? How are things, track. how are things responding? It's been amazing. I have not lost a pound yet, but my clothes fit better. Yeah, um, my perfect. uniform at work fits so much better. Um, we get weighed at work regularly. So it's always been something on my mind, uh, thinking about weight. And we talk a lot about it with employees just because we're always trying to make sure that we're making our weights. 
Um, and so it's just been really nice to uh, feel a lot better there. Yeah, okay, so you I'm, built I'm muscle so, and okay, lost I'm that. so curious about the job. Yeah, because you, you wear, you wear, you wear, a, you wear a big helmet. You have to be a certain way. What's, what, are you, what are you doing? Yeah, are you a race car driver? Yeah. Are you an <laughs> no, astronaut I, stripper? What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> no. um, I'm a flight paramedic, so I, oh. I work on a helicopter. Oh, oh wow! Oh, okay. Cool, very cool. That's yeah. awesome. Cool. Yeah, yeah, very yeah. Cool. No, yeah. so so you're what you're experiencing right now is like exactly how you want to start. Like you're getting leaner, yeah. you're building muscle, metabolism speeding up. You're about to hit that snowball effect, so just stay patient and stay the course. You're doing great, and I'm yeah. assuming you're hitting your protein targets and all that as well. Yes, it's definitely been a, a new way of eating, um, but it's getting easier as I go and uh, doing lots of meal prepping and that, um, and it, it really does feel great. So awesome. Katie, can we yeah. put you in our forum? I was just going to tell you. That. I would love to follow your progress. Yeah. Oh, I'd love that. Yes. Yeah, please. Yeah. We'll put you in the forum and then, you know, give us some periodic updates. Yeah, on yeah. Update us about once a month, letting us know how everything's going. I love that you have oh, the, the right you. mindset right now, that you have the perfect mindset for what you're doing. So totally. I'm excited mm -hmm. to see how it pans out. And what, what sports did you play, by by the way, in college? Uh, I played football, hockey, and did track. And then in college, I played hockey as well as track. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to, you're going to, you got the genetics behind it too. Yeah. You're going to respond really well. Yeah. I can't wait to see. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Right you on, got Katie. it. We'll, right. see you, Katie. we'll see you in the forum. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, dude. I was like, helmet and you weigh yourself yeah that's thought yeah. that was kind of weird <laughs> i couldn't think in my head i'm like what do you do, what do, you do, what do, you do <laughs> yeah that's so interesting what, yeah. a, what a great uh you know attitude like especially considering she sounds she says she just recently has found us right so yep. she hasn't been listening for a very long time no. one of the biggest challenges is when you're in that perfect sweet spot is not getting in your own way totally mm -hmm. you know the fact that she uh, was happy that the scale is not moving right most people are like oh i want i need to see the scale go down i want to see the scale go down but she's like well, even being an ex-athlete and not jumping into our yes. most advanced program yes. i give her kudos for kind of realizing yes. like it's been a Great. long time i'm going to go back into starter she's like being very methodical about it i, I think you know the neck training question is always one that's like a little tricky because you know and i i remember that as uh you know when i was playing football it's like how do we train the neck and it was such a fine line and really it's like isometric training yeah, is, is about as far as you need to go you yeah. don't really need to load uh but for her just to go through some of that controlled articulation and, and rotation with her neck very controlled is going to help a lot oh i 100 percent messed up my neck doing the crazy russian yeah. bridges touching my nose Dude, to the our, mat so walking our, around our high school right? had one of the like old school ones where you like yeah. vice grip your head yeah, yeah, oh we yeah. had that in yeah. the chain with yes. the we did all but that. that's that's actually Jack better than what i did bro we did i did the old school like i'd come up in a bridge so feet in my t head and i roll yeah. back till my no nose touched the floor <laughs> uh, and then i'd walk around you had a partner hold our chin you know as you're pushing down as far yeah. as possible and then, like they yeah. yank your head back <laughs> so now my my rotation is like uh, yeah. Yeah. that's it yeah. i look like i was limited now i look like batman you know yeah <laughs> Next caller is Rochelle from Colorado. Hi, Rochelle. Hi. How can hello, we help you? Hello. Oh, hi, guys. I tell you, I've been listening to you guys for about six months and my heart is pounding. I know they say that all the time when people get on, but it's a real deal. Mm -hmm. It's a real deal. That's how handsome Doug is. Hi, guys. Is. How are you? <laughs> We're good. How are you? <laughs> how are you doing? Good. Good. Thanks for having me on. Thanks you, for answering my question, I hope. You got it. Yeah, all right. What can we do? Well, <clears throat> as my uh, subject line said, I'm a seasoned lady. That means I'm not old. That means I'm 55. And I've been listening to you guys. In my opinion, you are voices of reason because there is a crazy place out there that just is called YouTube and the Internet. And it gives you a whole bunch of information. So I think you guys are my rudder right now and i need you so okay all right i don't know if you. i give you a lot of background but i want to give you a little bit because i think it plays in how you're going to talk to me but first and foremost six months ago i heard you guys i have also listened to dr Lyons, and I, I read a book by dr peter and tara about uh you know outlive uh, i'm going to slaughter the name of his book but outlive the science of aging and it really hit my heart about how I've been living my life. And my life has been about the aesthetics of being thin and watching a scale and gauging my life off of what the number says. I've never lifted weights except for starting six months ago. Um, I've, 
I love the outdoors. However, I'm in a battle with my body, in my opinion. What I mean by that is I don't have it any women parts anymore. Those have been gone for about four years. So I do take hormones, um, both estrogen and um, testosterone. And with that being said, I've been trying for that balance. I chose to eat carnivore starting about two and a half years ago. And it helped me um, manage um, my sugar addiction, I'm going to say, because there was never a piece of bread or a sweet treat that I would go past. Um, and I couldn't just eat one. I loved them. And so anyway, with that being said, I eat that way. But of course, I'm an extreme gal. I know my personality. I take something and I run with it and I do it to the hundredth degree. So I walk every day. Um, of course, that's turned into walking for a year straight, not skipping a day. I uh, started the weightlifting and I was doing kettlebells with just a video. And then I found you guys and you were like, no, you really want to do a program. So I am doing MAPS 15. And with that, I'm now doing that MAPS 15 with my walk. And I'm on the last nine weeks of that advanced. And then the final part of my back history is that through the carnivore and possibly intermittent fasting and eating once, like once a day, listening to my body when I'm hungry, I was probably under, I know I was under, so I messed with my metabolism as I have, but then I bulked up, meaning like I did what you guys say, I don't really know what the hell a bulk is, but I did it, meaning I ate three meals a day. I um, got my calories up and started looking at that a little bit. But I kind of am freaked out by that because I got rid of the scale. You guys are the only people in my entire life that have made me stop working. Awesome. I'm still, I'm still on the edge of it. But then I thought, don't go crazy looking at what you're eating. Although I do check in with it and I go, where's my protein? How many calories am I eating? And I would say average of 1,900 to 2,000. So the long and the short is here I am. 55, six months doing somewhat weightlifting. I know I want to be strong. I want to focus my life on how I am a woman. And I will say I'm not weighing myself anymore, but my pants are tight in my butt, on my thighs. I don't like that, but I understand I'm stronger. My arms, I know there's a muscle there. I can see it but it's tight in my clothing. So I guess I'm reaching to you guys to say, how patient do I have to be? I'm not patient. Now that I'm finishing out MAPS 15, I know I'm stronger, but I feel like I'm a bear with a layer of fat in my body that I want to melt away. So I'm coming to you guys, asking for your insight and your expertise I will follow what you say. Um, I want to just commit to one thing. I want to quiet the distractions in my head and on the internet. And I want to, I will be disciplined because that's who I am. But I want you guys to say, Rochelle, if you follow this, you are going to see results. And like you guys guarantee it. And I promise you, I will follow you to the end of the earth. <laughs> okay. I and be your and be your mouthpiece for all the seasoned ladies that were told. I like Thank you. Like Thank That's you. our next program. So, season. Season. Yeah. Season. Uh, so season. Yeah. Rochelle, I here's what I would want here's what I want for you. And and you let me know if you how this sounds, okay? I would I want for you to be able to move forward in a way that's healthy for you. That's going to give you strength, mobility. That's going to maintain a good body composition, but I don't want it to be a stress or a struggle. And I don't want you to do it out of sheer will. I want, I, I would like for you to be in a mental space to where, and I don't know if you've ever felt this way 
but I'd love for you to feel cool, confident, and calm as you move forward through this journey. That's what I'd want for you. What I don't want, because I think you've already done this, and I think that you probably struggle with this, is I don't want you to just follow something and white knuckle it be yeah. because you have the ability to just, oh, I'm just going to do what I'm supposed Bear to down. do. Yeah. I want you to do Heard. it. I want you to do it because it, you want to, and it's adding to the quality of your life. It is not a stress, and it feels, <clears throat> and it feels good. I want it to feel good. I don't want this mm. to feel stressful or challenging or um, like you're questioning yourself uh, or you, mm. you don't have confidence in it. Now, the way to accomplish that, it's going to be a bit of a process, but I do think working with a coach, with a good coach, is going to be your best bet. Because I can give you some advice right now, but you're going to encounter challenges and struggles with what I'm talking about, the mental aspect of it, the, the how I feel, and oh my God, my clothes feel different, and oh, I haven't weighed myself, but I really want to, or mm -hmm. okay, I'm just going to I'm just gonna do this because I'm going to force myself. I don't want you to feel tyrannized by yourself. I don't want you to feel forced. Yeah. I want you to feel like you want to do this and it feels good and it's joyful, but it's going to be a bit of a process. And I think a coach that works with you uh, on a weekly basis is going to be your best bet. I really do. I want you to know that you, I don't think you're far off from this sweet spot where you need to be. I think that, I think you're doing a lot. I think you're putting a lot on you to Sal's point. I think that's, I think that's important. I think we can put you in the forum. I think we, there's an incredible community and we're in there to help you through this process. Um, but really it would be, uh, it, it just needs to be less stressful that you can hear the pressure that you have on yourself of like, I need to do this and I need to perform and it needs to be like, it's like, this, uh, should be a very enjoyable process. There's a lot of exciting things too. The fact that you're coming from uh, never really lifting weights consistently until recent in your life. That's a really mm -hmm. positive thing. That coupled with you feeding the body properly, meaning giving yourself the nutrients your body needs, hitting your protein intake, and strengthening, it's going to respond. And you're going to continually get better and better and sculpt. What will shoot yourself in the foot, though, is stressing about it and doing too much, trying to get there faster. So it's, it's a dance. And it really... I, I mean, what I think uh, Maps Anabolic is where I would want her training wise right now. I think she, do you have access to a gym or are you training from home? Training from home. Okay. And I mean, but if, but, you know, my son was like, are you opposed? It's just a time thing, a convenience thing. I work hard for my, what I do for a living, and there's a window. It's early in the morning. That's okay. when I do it. What kind of equipment do you have access to, Rochelle? So I have the adjustable dumbbells up to 50. Okay. I have uh, kettlebells up to, I think, 60 something. And then I have that TRX. I have the Airdyne. Um, I, have, I have bands. Yeah, you're good. Um, you're good. I can send you MAP suspension so that after 15, if you want to follow something different uh, with the equipment that you have, you could follow that. Maps Anabolic does have a dumbbell only version. Um, you would need a bench. I don't know if you have a bench at home. I do have a bench. Okay. I do have a bench. So I could send you one of those. I think either one of those will be great for you. Um, but, oh my gosh. Thank yeah. you. But I'd like to, you know, let me, if you don't mind, I'd like to ask you um, maybe what would be considered a bit of a personal question. Would you, <laughs> is that, is that okay? Yeah. Yes, of course. Would you say that you're really hard on yourself, that you judge yourself a bit harshly and that this is what in the past has driven you to change and grow and, and do things. Oh, for sure. I would say I am, uh, I'm resilient. I'm, I'm like tenaciously disciplined. Um, I really valued what you were saying. I do want this journey. I am seasoned. That means it is about enjoying life. Yeah. I've raised those kids up. I get what you're saying. And I really value that, that like I have to adjust this thought process because yes. um it, I, it, it's forever it's like the forever i'm i'm in that part of my life i want to do this forever um but i i will honestly say to you as a woman we know how to do it and yeah. sometimes it is like i had said to my mom she has a great figure she's up there but i i what i mean by that is like sometimes as a woman you're like ah, skinny fat's fine because it aesthetically sure. fits into what I'm doing, but I really mentally, because I'm trying to do 
better for my life, say stronger is better. Stronger, yes. healthier yes. is better. Yes. This and is so I'm I'm trying, but I'm being really vulnerable with you guys to say as a woman, uh, aesthetically and how I feel, I hate that it matters, but I'm being honest no. because women need to be honest with each other. I, I, oh. I agree a hundred percent, Rochelle. I appreciate your honesty and your vulnerability. This is a process like the process of getting better at an exercise or getting stronger it takes a while before it becomes automatic. So you have an inner voice or a way that you talk to yourself, or a way that you, the way that you've driven growth in the past was through probably self-criticism or shame. And you can grow through that. But the problem is it robs you of the joy of feeling like this is something you voluntarily want to do. When it's done through shame, it's almost like it's done through being tyrannized. Like, oh, I'm not good enough. Oh, I'm bad. Oh, you idiot. Or, And so when you do grow that way, what you lose is the joy of the feeling of the, I chose to do this and I want to do this. And wow, look how far I've come. So you've actually robbed yourself of the, uh, the quality of life that can come from growth. You still grow and change but you're missing out on that. Now it, it, it's a process like exercise. So I want you to be careful here. It will not be an automatic. What you're saying right now is totally normal. This is going to be a process of retraining yourself and how you talk to yourself and the self-talk that you might not even be aware of the way that you judge yourself. And okay, I know I feel this way and I know this is the right way. Let me try. And it feels awkward at first. Okay. I want to be strong. Yeah. I want to be healthy. I want to be calm about this. Um, but it will start to become automatic the more you practice it. But initially, you're going to have to practice it consciously, which is going to feel a bit awkward, uh, to say the least. But I really do think, and what we'll do here when we hang up here, Rochelle, is we have access to coaches that we really like. And mm -hmm. after, when we're done here and we hang up, we'll discuss who we think might be a good fit for you. And we'll send you their contact and you can see if it's a fit. But I really think you you would benefit from having a guide through this process. Um, I think you'll move there. You'll move so much quicker by working with someone through this process. So as far as the, like what you're doing, you're doing the right stuff. Yeah. It's just how you feel about it that we need to work on. At the bare minimum, I want you in the forum. So I'm going to have Doug put you in the forum. So uh, mm. I, I agree with Sal. If we can get you with a coach, it would be the perfect world. But if we, at the bare minimum, at least coming in and checking in with us, uh, in the private forum so we can continue to, and I, you know, we didn't touch on it. I saw in your notes, like you were doing things like 75 hard. Like I want, I, mm -hmm. I, I don't want you doing any of that type of stuff. I like literally no. follow the program. Walks are great. Right. So I love the, I love walks and nature and I'm all, I'm all for that. Um, so the walking is fine coupled with the strength training coupled with hitting your protein intake uh, every day. Like those are the, those yeah. are the big rocks right there. Let's get strong. Let's walk. Let's follow the program the way it's laid out. And let's make sure we hit our protein intake. And then the, the rest will start to fall in place. And think of it this way. You're not forcing your body to change. You're encouraging yeah. it. It's an encouragement. It is not forced. Yeah. So anytime you work out or anytime you you're feeding yourself, you, and you might, again, consciously do this. Ask yourself, am I forcing my body to do what I want yeah. or am I encouraging it and inviting it to yeah. do what I want? It's a very different energy and it will guide you in more appropriate, healthy ways. If you don't, it'll rebel. Oh, you'll lose. Yeah. If you'll, you try and force yeah. it or push it or will it to where you want it to go, it, re it what, will rebel. Here's what will happen. You'll be like those fitness influencers that we know that take pictures of themselves and they're miserable. They're absolutely miserable mm. the entire time. Um, so it, it, forcing it is a lose-lose battle. No, I love it. Two, three things. So the one part, like I, I always think of God wings. You're having a God wink with me right now, which is because I believe in him and he brings the right people into my life. But you spoke of joy. I don't know if you saw on my email, but my true like salutation is like, go have a joy filled day. Mm. In my world, the joy is God for me. But you just hit on it saying like, you're, you're, not living it at 100%, but if I choose to really embrace that and think of the joy you hit on it, so you have a God wake. So that was great. And then, um, Adam, with what you're saying about being in that forum, I mean, I spoke to it a little bit, but I'm telling you, as a gal that's just trying to figure it out, you hear lift 
heavy shit. Don't lift. Do hit. Yeah. Do I know. do this. So Terrible. many things. But if but with a forum, I don't know what that's like. Meaning, I don't really do social media. But I imagine that maybe it's a little bit more safety parameter in there. It's I our people. Know, it's it, a, it's us. It's, it's us. We're yeah. in there too. Yeah. So I appreciate I appreciate that. That kind of makes me breathe a little different like okay okay Mm -hmm. and then i do i haven't really heard you guys say like go get a coach to somebody else i'm like what the hell i think you guys are my coach like you're in my (laughs) phone every morning but if you're saying that i would benefit from that then you know i'm gonna listen to you but i definitely again that just scares crap out of me to be like oh now go swim in that pool to go find the right person because no, we'll, I mean, we'll, I, we'll introduce you. Yeah. We'll introduce you to somebody. We will, yeah. 100%. And by the way, in the what one of the other things that's in that forum, besides just us and a great community, are a ton of other trainers and coaches. Rochelle, so I just, there's a lot of other trainers and coaches that are in there totally. too that will help encourage and, and guide you through this process. And, and just the trade vulnerability, I, I believe exactly what you believe. And that's the exact same journey I'm on right now with shame. That's how I mm-hmm. used to grow. And so, it, you know, when I'm talking to you, I'm talking mm-hmm. to myself as well. I know how tough it could be. But it's 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 possible for sure. Well, I really appreciate that. I really do. I I don't know. I'm hopeful. Okay, so I'm hopeful. Um, I don't know what if you, I do want to leave here with doing a program. So tell me what that next one is. If you think it's TRX or if you think it's dumbbells with the anabolic, I'm there. I think anabolic. Just, yeah. Let's do maps anabolic. Uh, follow the dumbbell only version. Okay. And okay. so then that is awesome. Thank you guys. You I it. do want to, to hit you guys with just this, is that I will say I'm looking at three good men. I listen to you. My time is really uh, important to me. I don't have a lot of downtime, but I put you in my ears. You make me laugh. I do find it. I'm seasoned. I'm older, but I've been down the road 39 years with my man. I support you guys with what you're doing. We need good men in the world. Keep being that um, that reflection. Thank I'm you. telling you, you might be changing bodies, but I think you're changing the mind of a lot of people and a lot of young, I say young, but men that need good men. So keep being that. Thank you. Being that. Mm-hmm. I want to uh, just encourage you. Such That's a, a nice compliment. Best Thank compliment. You. Thank you so much, Rochelle. We'll see you in the forum, Absolutely. okay? We'll see you in the forum, okay? okay. Sounds great. Thanks, right. guys. Wow, I love her. Love her. Tough journey. Yeah. yeah. Tough journey. But uh, with her attitude, I think, you know, we'll, we'll try and find a good coach for her. I think she'll, she's, she'll be she's, her biggest critic. She, she's yeah. doing the right yeah. things. Yeah, yeah. She just needs those conversations. And that's where a coach, I, I do think, is the best, you know, fit for that to to keep keep ping-ponging these struggles and mentally. It's mental struggles. Totally. It's really going to cripple. 100%. The exciting part, though, is you know when you have somebody who has not lifted weights most of their life, if I can just get them excited about that, yeah. Right. And that is going to get used to that. Feeling. Th- that's right. Like that's, and, and, and I know she kind of pointed out a little bit like, Oh, you hear on the internet, just, just get strong, get strong. And, but it's the truth. Like that's just get into, yeah. you know, Embrace and, it. and approach the workouts with this, like, I want to get good at this movement. It's foreign to me. It's new. I've never done any of this stuff. Yeah. And so I want to get good at it. I want to practice it. And then through practice, I'm going to get more confident and through confidence, I'm going to get stronger from adding more weight and just totally focus on that, uh, coupled with knowing that this is a journey and a process. And, and it, you, I think she's going to be very, very happy when she looks back from six months down the road of being consistent with this. Look, if you love the show, head over to mindpumpfree.com. We have a lose fat guide. It's totally free and it gives you all the information you need to help your body lose fat and not muscle. Also, you can find us on social media. Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. I'm on Instagram at Mind Pump to Stefano and Adam is on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam.